running in the engine and fitting the cylinder cladding. Part 57. This engine has a lot of moving parts and the running in or breaking in period took a while. This video mainly features clips of the engine running and by the time I fitted the baking tray cladding it was sounding a whole lot better. I don't need to narrate this video, it's fairly self-explanatory. The engine is running and as the video progresses it gets smoother but there are one or two points I need to mention. When the engine is in full forward or full reverse gear, the drop arms move about a little bit, which is a bit strange as they're pinned to the shaft using taper pins. The good news is, I think that I have the valve timing right. It's even possible to notch up the engine by turning the reversing handle in the opposite direction to the way the engine is running. Sometimes when I'm turning the handle towards reverse, there is a bit of a lock-up on the low pressure expansion link, but this is getting better all the time. The engine is making quite a lot of mechanical noise, and this is due to the fact that it is sat on my workbench, which is a soundboard. This is intentional because I like to hear the mechanical noise, it helps me find out where the faults are. During the running in or braking in period, it is essential to flood the moving parts of the engine with oil. This washes away all the pieces of metal that have been removed during the running in process. When I first started, all of the oil that I applied to the moving parts quickly turned black, but now most of the oil is still the same colour as it was when I applied it. This is a sure sign that the running in process is nearing completion. The oil that I applied to the vacuum pump and the condensate pump really did turn very black at first, but it's okay now, everything's running very clean. In this clip I'm winding the reversing handle the other way to make the engine run in reverse, and now I'm going to stop talking for a while. I repeatedly changed the direction of running for this engine and here once again I'm winding the handle to reverse the position of the valve gear. This small engine is deceptively powerful, even though the high pressure cylinder is only three quarters of an inch in diameter. I've placed the boiler that I'm going to use with this engine quite close to it, so you get the idea of what it's going to look like when I build it into a steam plant and the video is running at a quarter speed in this clip.
The engine is starting to run much smoother now. Unfortunately, my compressor is overheating, so I'm going to have to stop doing this for a while. And after the compressor had cooled, time for a bit more running. Here's the other side of the engine with the baking tray cladding fitted in position. I did video this, but all you could see was my hand holding various screwdrivers and dropping things on the floor, like these very small 7BA brass machine screws. Eventually, with some patience, I got there in the end. In the last few clips of the engine running, I put some pieces of Scotch-Brite underneath the base. Scotch-Brite, and this is the green stuff, is remarkably good for making steam engines run a lot quieter on the bench. I hope you've enjoyed this series, it's really taken some doing and taxed me at certain stages to my limits. There's still a bit of work to do. I need to seal all the unions and fit an inlet manifold and lubricator. And also, at some stage, I will be giving the engine a steam test. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.